welcome to Romantic Tarot. This is your weekly glimpse into the relationships, insights into relationships in your life or what you can expect, what's coming towards you. Literally, it is the what and the who is coming towards you. The who is coming towards you is always found in the extended version of this reading. If you're real curious, you can hop right over there now, but I think that you should probably wait to see um, this this version, um, not version, this and the energies that come up here. And then I build upon these energies and go into specifics about who you're dealing with, what they're feeling, what they'll look like if you're single and, and <laughs> looking for somebody, what they look like, who they'll, who they'll be like, what kind of mindset they have, or insights into you know, what your partner's feeling if you're in a relationship now, what they're going through, what could be bothering them, et cetera, et cetera. We'll see what energies come up. Every single zodiac sign is time stamped. So feel free to just peruse through, play with it. I would recommend three things. Checking your one moon sign. That is the most important sign for your love affairs. Two, your Venus sign, clearly also extremely important for your love affairs. And three, your Mercury sign, extremely important as well for all kinds of communication, knowing how you communicate as well as how you receive communications. Also, your rising sign is smart to know as well. So that's four different signs you should be checking in, in this video and in the extended so that you can get a real complete understanding of all the elements and energies that are influencing your love life and your romance life right now. All right, guys, let's get into the reading. I'm going to shuffle the cards as I go, and then I'll let you know. We're going to start off. You'll see me writing down. You are going to start off right now with Scorpio. All right, Scorpio, let's go. Scorpio in love and romance. Conclusions are within reach, Scorpio. So you're going to be able to get the answers that you want. And conclusions immediately, these, this card talks to me about finally understanding all those things that were impacting and hurting or harming or causing you pain and not understanding what the heck is going on. The answers are coming in terms of either internal enlightenment, because this is moon energy and it's full moon energy. So it's usually emotional release. So you being able to finally put things together yourself and to the point where you can release any kind of hurt or, or um, unbalanced energy that is banging around in your system because of some sort of um, misunderstanding between you and your loved one or um, <clears throat> lack of insight into why romantic relationships are a struggle for you or um, whatever insight you didn't have into what's going on with your partner, why have they been acting this way? Those answers are going to be coming to you and I think that they'll be coming to you in a very peaceful way of you being able to let go if you have to. Good riddance, and peace be with you, that kind of energy. This doesn't mean that you're breaking up with somebody. It, it could very well mean that because that is the ultimate conclusion. In fact, this is eclipse energy. So um, not that there's an eclipse now, but this card um, represents eclipse energy. So that is major change, major change in your belief system, in the way that you see love, interact with love, or the way that you perceive your current partner, something coming to, something coming out, something being revealed. Um, what my prediction is, is that emotionally you'll be ready to release and let go of any kind of issue or problem, sadness, if you've been frustrated or hurt, you, you and your partner got into an argument, there's been conflict in the home, Home, you'll be able to release it and let it go. So in other words, forgiveness, getting freedom from those energies that, that harm you internally. Scorpio, this is your time to come out of the dark by letting go of any emotions that are getting in your way, as well as any circumstances that are getting in your way. So you will be, be you will have the strength to be able to be like, bye, bye, bye. Um, I don't want to be a fool for you. Peace out this coming, like this coming week, these energies are, are going to really, really, you're going to be really pushed to be able to make decisions that are best for you, to understand your soul well enough 
to know what goes and know what stays and know what to say to get to the bottom of things, to understand things. Have you been wondering, like wondering about what your partner's like, why your partner's behaving that way or um, waiting for a decision from somebody? Those answers are coming. That decision is going to be made. Um, those decisions are going to be made. Those conversations are going to be had. Conclusions are within reach. Get ready, get prepared. Scorpio, Scorpio, look to your inner strength. There's spying going on here. Spying going on. Somebody watching somebody, somebody looking up on the internet, somebody looking on Facebook, somebody looking on, yeah, looking on the internet, somebody looking on Facebook, uh, Instagram, social media. 11, being awakened and finding information on somebody by watching them, watching them from afar or realizing that somebody is watching you. So this could be how you're getting the information. Divine timing, it's the perfect timing because, ooh, did you need to know this information? You needed to hear it. You needed to have it. You needed to realize it. Why are you all about my profile? Why are you looking at somebody's profile? Looking at somebody's profile and something finally, bam, comes into sync. You finally realize what's been going on. This is like finding messages or seeing things or understanding things by snooping, which isn't necessarily the best way to do it, I have to say. But this is a sense of, this also comes out, no, sorry, that's not your energy. This is your energy for this week. That's what it is. It's being able to finally, everything clicks when you get information. And I think it's through snooper, super, super sleuthing. Like looking at somebody's profiles, reading their emails, or, or literally checking up on them. Basically, you're done trying to get information directly from them. So you're going to go super sleuth and figure out and find out something all on your own. Of course, all of these energies could be in reverse as well, Scorpio. So it could very well be that somebody's trying to snoop on you to get some information on you. Now, I don't know if you like that. I don't know if you'll figure it out. I don't know how you'll feel about that person, but we can get into the who is coming towards you and what they're up to. That's in the extended reading. I'll see you guys over there. Sagittarius, let's see what your energy is <clears throat> in love and romance. What is coming towards Sagittarius? What is coming towards Sagittarius? Ooh, your own energy. Now is a lucky time. Take time to breathe out. You're going to be getting some release. You're going to be getting some um, relief. You're going to be like almost like a needle in um, like a like an air valve being being deflated. Uh, luck is on your side. Something hitting the mark at just the right time. This is about perfect timing. You can ooh relax. You can relax because they feel the same for you. They want the same things as you. Or basically, this could also be um, they're finally off your back. They finally let you go. They finally released you. So whatever it is that's going to make you feel a little bit more released, a little bit more this week, that's what's going to be happening. Um, if you are aiming at somebody in particular, you are hitting your target this week. Um, time, uh, take a breath out. Um, I also feel like this is all about, listen, before you take aim and before you let your arrow fly, breathe in and exhale. Do it with a clear mind. It's a reminder to clear your mind and don't make a rash decision when it comes to love this week. Now, I know that you guys uh, thrive on chaos and you love to just jump right into things and handle things as they come. But that energy isn't going to be so good for you this week. These cards are saying that you need to take a breather and focus before you take aim, before you select your target this week. So that could even speak to dealing with your spouse. Before you pick a fight this week, before you speak, take a breath, exhale, and make sure that you're aiming in the right direction because there could be a little bit of a warning in this energy, Sagittarius, that says, hmm... You don't want to hit somebody in the wrong place. You know, you don't want to hit the wrong person. You don't want to put that arrow fly into the wrong person's heart. You know what I'm saying? Because now you could be stuck with them and you don't want to have to deal with it. Maybe you just got done dealing with it. This is a sense of something will stay your hand just long enough for you to aim it 
in a direction that's going to be fruitful for you and they're going to make you happy and, and that's going to make you happy instead of you know it, instead of a place where you're going to regret it sooner than later um yeah so yes you will hit your target yes um, things will be working out for you. You'll be like, oh, yes, thank God. Oh, my God, I got it. And now this could also be like, oh, somebody just saved your life. Oh, my God. Oh, thank God they didn't see that it was me. Or thank God they didn't think I liked them. Oh, my God. Like you will, in other words, dodge a bullet when it comes to love and romance this week. It could very well be that you're dodging somebody else's arrow or that you're dodging like, oh, mm, it wasn't me. You're not getting caught. You're going to be able to not get caught this week doing whatever that you've been doing. Now, I'm not for cross-watching. I'm not trying to say that your Sag is up to something. That's not a confirmation. Um, but it is, it is to say that they're not going to get caught this week. You know, if, you, if you're looking to catch Sagittarius out on something, it's not, you're not, you're not going to catch them out this week. Um, this is a sense of they'll be dodging bullets and they'll be very good at it this week. And from your perspective, Sagittarius, this is really a good thing. Whether you're in a relationship or not, this is a sense of knowing where you're aiming and aiming in the right place and being able to avoid any conflict with other people. Nice. Sagittarius. Sagitt Ooh, right out. Be authentic. Be real and true to who you are and how you feel. So how are you dodging those bullets? Nine plus three is 12, which adds up to three. You stay balanced. You stay certain of who you are right and that's what gives you comfort that's what gives you that grounding to be able to be like do i really want that person's attention do i really need to waste my time do i really need to get into conflict into conflict do i really need to respond to that message on in my dm do i really need to comment you know respond to that comment on facebook that i i know is trying to bait me and get me into some long freaking discourse when I told them I didn't want to be around that, like, no, being authentic and being yourself is what's going to stay your hand. It's what's going to help focus you be like, oh, this is not who I am. And do I really care about this? No. So it is being yourself, being genuine, which really kind of, um, I think, I think, I think it fuels the energy of finding somebody that is really right for you or finding the words to say, or be able to finally find somebody that makes you comfortable enough to be yourself and to not have to worry or feel like you have to be something else. Like you have finally found the one to be able to be yourself with somebody who makes you feel comfortable. And that's what they'll be marked by your ability to be yourself around them and not have to worry or apologize for yourself. You could just be foolish you could just be who you are this is about authenticity and focusing and staying your hand so that what you want or what you're aiming at is not just about a reaction in the moment but instead it's about but what do I really want like what's really important to me this is you being able to be real and really bring home the win because you just aligned with your 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 truth instead of your impulses okay sagittarius what are they up to mm -hmm. who's on the other side of that arrow that link is below in the description box who is coming towards you i'll see you guys over there capricorn welcome back to romantic tarot guys uh, let's see what's up in your life. What is coming toward Capricorn? Capricorn, please. Capricorn energy. What is coming toward Capricorn? Very good day. Today is a very good day. Today is a very good day. Your dreams need a practical plan. This is really interesting energy for you because this is Taurus energy. I know that you want what you want, Capricorn. This is a sense, this is this is the card that comes out when what you want is like, I'm only gonna date him. I remember because I love the I love the Golden Girls. And there is a scene where Blanche says to Rose and Dorothy, she's like, Oh yes, I'm definitely getting married again. But he'll have to like look like Mel Gibson, have the energy of Burt Reynolds, and have the financial resources of Donald Trump. Something like that. And you know, Dorothy looks at her and says, I think we're going to be together for a long time because 
this is like Taurus energy is I want the luxury. I want the finances. I want the finest. And there is no shame in the game, Capricorn, of setting your standards high. And at Born Without Boundaries, you are never going to hear me tell you to settle. I always tell people do not settle. You keep those standards high. But what are those standards based on? Are those standards based on your ego or your heart? This is a card that comes up and says you need to realign and rebalance and understand something. That just because that has financial resources of Donald Trump, he could also have the personality of some Donald Trump too. All right. Like, what are you getting yourself into? And what are you aiming your standards at? We've talked about this before, Capricorn. I know you guys have a checklist. Just like that opening scene with Catherine Heigl in, in uh, The Ugly Truth. She's sitting up there like with her checklist. They don't work in love and romance. They work at work. But they don't work at love and romance. And this is a thing of... You need to reassess what you put on that checklist because I know that you want, he got to have a nice house. And if he has children, they can't be living at home. Or, it, you know, she's got to have like a 22-inch waist. And it's like, wait, what? Where are your standards and are, really, are they really aligned with your morality? And if your morality is all about like shallow things, 3D, luxurious, beauty, like glamour-based things, which is what this Taurus energy is, um, maybe that's why you're never ending up with somebody who actually loves you or that you're really emotionally compatible with. You better check your moon sign, Capricorn. Go look, figure it out, find the natal chart. You can go to cafeastrology.com, get yourself a free astrological chart. No, they are not a paid sponsor for me. I love their service. I'm recommending them to you. You can get a free natal chart. You'll know your moon sign. That's what I'm telling you, to go do the homework and see where you are emotionally aligned, Capricorn, because there's some sort of dissonance that's here with what you put on the checklist compared to what you really need in your life, how you really want to be cared for, and what's going to really make you happy. Mm. Okay, you know, sometimes it's almost like I don't, I don't want to be like shaking the finger because I'm talking to adults. I don't need to be shaking the finger, right? But this is a sense of Capricorn. Um, it's just a sense of like, yeah, it's like you, you want somebody who will love you. You want somebody who will, who, will, who will care about you, who will take care of you, not in terms of pay your bills. You don't need nobody to pay your bills. But you're Capricorns, for God's sake. You pay other people's bills. But the sense, but this is a sense of like, you really need to reassess why you admire somebody so much. Like why they matter so much to you. Why you think why do you think they're so wonderful if they keep making you miserable? Reassess the situation. Um, get to know each other. This is a deep, compassionate love that is matured, that doesn't have those frivolous, glamorous, high school, dreamy kind of checklist elements. This is just getting real with somebody, being emotionally, emotionally real and true and finding a lover that is somebody who is emotionally compatible with you who is mature. This is the grown folks card, okay? This is the card of, of grown folks falling in love. This is no little children's love. This is mature love, which means I know myself, you know yourself, and we can be sincere with each other so we can actually get to know the real versions of each other. You know, like, like that's, that's real grown folks love. You could be dealing with, I'll get into the signs you may be dealing with in the who is coming towards you. That link is below, and I do hope to see you over there. This card is also adds up to eight. You see four, four adds up to eight. You see one, seven adds up to eight. So it's all about, about a little bit of destiny. It's all about a little bit of timing, Capricorn. And eight, eight, eight does usually represent that money is coming into you. So a sense of maybe if you have your own money or you have your own success, you won't, you won't, I don't know. I don't know. I understand that you like somebody who is financially secure. You want to know that they have built themselves. Like, like, see, I understand that that's part of how you qualify a mate because 
you work so hard, number one, and number two, you don't want to have to worry about paying somebody's bills, number, you know, number, well, number one, number two, I forgot which number we were on, but you also like work ethic in somebody. You also like to know, but the fact that they have a career and they've built a business tells me a lot about their character. It's not just about money. It's about how are, are they responsible? You know, do they get up in the morning? Do they work hard? Those are, those are important things. Understand, I understand that. But they're not everything when it comes to romance. Because you're right, you could have just qualified a really great person. But it doesn't mean they're great for you. So you have to let that emotional compatibility get in there and love indoors. There is some sort of sense of you having patience with somebody. I think you already know somebody. Somebody who you've gone a long distance with already, whether you're with them now or not. There is a sense of you being able to get through hard times, lean on them, care for them, be friends with each other. There is a sense of you guys being able to get through something as long as you have patience with each other. Like patience being that key key ingredient this is Aquarius energy star card energy star card energy truth just allowing somebody to grow and develop and be ready remember I said eight eight that's like divine timing is almost like you're waiting for your mate to be ready for you they're preparing themselves for you and you are having patience and trying to get to know yourself better so you're prepared for them. So it's not necessarily like you're waiting just to like tread water. You're using this time right wisely. And these cards tell me they're using this time wisely too. So what's up with them? Who are they? That link is below. And I do hope you join me in the extended. I'll see you guys over there. Aquarius. Aquarius in love and romance. All right, Aquarius, let's see. What what do you what message do we have for Aquarius in love and romance? Uh, Aquarius in love and romance. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, you are good enough. Somebody needs to hear that. You're very close to achieving your goals. Oh, that's really lovely energy. Um See, this is Virgo energy, virgin, something fresh, something new, or giving up anything that's standing in the way of you loving yourself. This is healing. You're able to heal. You're able to let go of those things that have been cumbersome to you, Aquarius, and getting in your way. There is also a sense of seeing and finally understanding your true and complete value or being able to accomplish a goal that you had. I don't know if it's weight loss goals. I don't know if it's career goals, but there has been something personal that you have been working on for you that has been getting in the way of you prioritizing your love life or your romantic partner. There has been something, and you know what? In your mind, it don't matter. In your mind, it's like, if I don't have this fixed, if I don't have this solved, I, it's almost like you chose to take time to focus on healing yourself and really just giving you all your time and energy so that you would be a better partner, so that you have to get this out of the way. It could also mean that you've been healing and working on something in your relationship. If you've had a long-term relationship and things have been going, being a little bit wonky, you have objectively stepped back and said, well, how can we fix this? How could we work on it? You could be going through counseling, taking counseling, reading books together, been doing exercises with each other to help understand each other's side. This is a sense of you have been working on doing something that is going to heal you and heal your relationship or your ability to form relationships. And so Aquarius, this is a lot of work that is, it is helping. This is saying, the, not only is the work helping, but you're almost there. You almost got yourself to a point where you can open up your heart and be able to be vulnerable, which is not easy for you guys, right? And it's because you have such particular standards, such high standards. And it's not like you like to, you don't like to bring them down. I understand that. I'm not saying you should bring your standards down. But it's it's a sense of vulnerability doesn't come easy for you. Emotion, being emotional doesn't really come easy for you, which can make uh, romantic relationships pretty darn tricky because they could end up being just based on things that are sort of on the surface and more intellectual, but then never really fulfill you emotionally. So this is a sense of you working on getting your whole self and your full self 
in, co in communion with each other, like all parts, body, mind, and spirit, in communion with each other so that you can be a great partner, um, so that you and your partner can work through whatever issues you've been working through. You can understand yourself. This is a sense of really getting to the point where you are actually happy. And it's, uh, listen, go on for everybody who wakes up every morning, look at themselves in the mirror. I love you. You are beautiful because that's work. You're working on yourself and we should be doing that. But this is a sense of that work actually paying off of getting to the point where you feel like you have actually done the, your mind has changed alchemically. You don't have to remind yourself that you love yourself every day because every day you wake up, you do love yourself. This is a, a truth. It's now become a truth. It's now become a reality. This manifestation has come into life. It's, it's real. You have, you're reaping the harvest, right? This isn't planting the seeds. You're picking the fruit. So if you were after a specific person, if you were working on a specific relationship, you about to taste the juiciness, baby. Taste the rainbow. Taste the flavor. Taste the sumptuousness. It's coming. And I think that you guys are the perfect players for this energy because you are you you are really good at not uh, you're really good at not throwing yourself into, right? You're, you're really good at like, okay. You're really good at being the, the idling. You're really good at just be like, all right, all right, all right. I don't got to go yet. I'm, I, I, I'm like, it's not about waiting. For you, it's not about waiting. It's about focusing and it's about watching and it's about observing and you're enjoying yourself here, all right? But you're not going to get too comfortable there it's almost time. You know it. You know the race is about to begin. You know the gun is about to go off. You know. You're ready. You're ready and you're prepared. Mm. What? I don't even know. Come on, Michelle. <laughs> Putting my cards in the wrong place. Aquarius. Aquarius in love and romance. Ooh, that card just flipped out. Gee. Oh, oh, oh. Back to what you love. Maybe you've been waiting for somebody specifically. Um, somebody that you, oh, this is more Virgo energy. I don't know if you're dealing with a Virgo, but that's really interesting that you're getting, you're getting double Virgo energy. This is Virgo energy, feeding the beast, falling in love with that somebody. I don't know if this is dragon energy, so you could be dealing with, you know, scorpionic energy uh, just, or somebody who is tough to love. Um, somebody who is difficult or hard to understand, but you just can't. It's like you're fascinated by them. Ah, they're like a freaking fairy tale. And it's almost like if you've been putting a lot of energy and a lot of effort into this person, guess what? You got to have them eating out of your hand, Aquarius. Back to what you love, getting back to the truth. It could very well be somebody is coming back to you. Somebody's coming back. Now, you may not want anybody back, in which case, shut the door on their face. I mean... It's not, it's not complicated, Aquarius. You don't, just because they come back doesn't mean you have to take them, right? Um, but it's also like there's a sense of um, love coming back into your life or um, you, this is somebody that you would want to hear from again. You know, there's a sense of this is somebody that you, you have, could, whether you like it or not, you have not been able to stop thinking about them. So there is a sense of somebody coming back into your circumstance or your situation. And it could very well be to end things right? To help you finally be able to release and let go and be okay with being, being, letting go or letting them go or letting the fantasy go. But I, I feel like this is a sense of somebody just be eating out of your hand. It's almost like somebody just can't resist you. They just got to, they just going to keep on coming back to you. They, they can't stop thinking about you. That's that sense. Somebody just can't stop thinking about you. You're going to, you're about to have them eating out of your hand. Who are they? What are they going through? What's up with them? That link is in the who is coming towards you. Please join me for the extended reading. I'll see you guys over there. Pisces. All right, Pisces. What is going on in your romance? And what messages that do you need to hear about romance? What is it? What messages does Pisces need to hear? Okay. I hear you. Pisces. 
two cards have come out. A personal issue reaches resolution, a time for healing. Now you may very well be dealing with a cancer, but this is loving energy, a mother, mothering energy, nurturing energy, healing energy, resources like the Queen of Cups energy, just giving, healing, solving, fixing, that kind of energy. Um, this is a sense of something really unresolved deep down inside of you, some sort of issue that you've been dealing with or a complication in your relationship. There is an emotional healing. There there is an emotional truth. There is finally being able to let go because you know cancerian energy, you just can't let go. They can't let go, they can't let go. It's something, um, it's almost like something has caused somebody a great deal of pain. And if you are in a great deal of pain, Pisces, because you have had to let somebody go, because um, um, you something did not work out, there is a there's something in your love affair that's going on that is just um, that has been hurting you or, uh, the lack, lack, whatever, lack of contact, lack of community. It doesn't matter. The resolution, whatever has been hurting you, you're finally able to heal. This could be something that you are dealing with internally. Um, like, um, like a personal, a personal issue. Yeah. A personal issue re reaches resolution. So something that has been harming how you fall in love, who you fall in love with, um, or how successful your relationships are. Um, your maybe inability to stay faithful or inability to be trusting or something like that. And no, I'm, I'm not saying this to accuse you. I'm saying this because this is, this is a, this is a card combination that suggests you have done a lot of hard work. You have been working extremely hard on yourself because being in a loving relationship is something that you really want. And you could be currently with a very loving partner, but there has been something that has been holding you up. And I think those of you who are with really loving partners, you're the ones that see it the most. Like, you know that you have a loving partner, but at the same time, you're like, you're like, I don't know, like why, I do this or why I'm like this. And so this suggests that you've done the work and you have healed. This is also a sense of maybe your partner has been going through something, struggling with something very fearsome, maybe gruesome, you know, like something that has been taken a long time and has been hard for them to let go of. But this is a sense of your partner is going to be just fine. They are healed. They are going to get healthy. They're going to be restored to health. Um, their life is, they're going to get their job back. You know, like, like those kind of things, those things that could put pressure on your relationship and be causing a rift between the two of you. It is something that's going on with either you because it's personal issues. Remember, so it's either going on with you or it's going on with them, but it's definitely impacted the relationship or your ability to have a relationship. And it's those things that you're going to be getting some good news about. There's just a, a bit of happiness, like a, like a relief, like a healing. You could finally be able to let go of the worry of worrying and being scared and, um, maybe even like, um, afraid in some cases, there's a sense of, you're going to get some good news. Okay. I keep, I keep misplacing these cards. It's really weird. Pisces, Pisces in love and romance. Who are they dealing with? What's coming toward them? Actions speak loudly. Ooh, somebody showing effort or somebody coming in and like, in other words, in other words, Remember how I said, if you're with a loving partner, you'll know it especially. Ooh, and look what the card it is. So we have three plus two uh, relationship patterns. Finally being able to look at yourself, acknowledge and honor what it is, what's happening, what's harming, what's hurting. Really being able to look at the situation and see it for what it is. And then that energy of three plus two, five, change. You can't change it until you can see it. Until you know what you're dealing with, you can't go in there and make it any better. Well, guess what, Pisces? Now you are empowered. You, there's a change that's coming. There's a change that's coming, and it's because you were able. Like, you are literally able to touch it now. You're able to put action to um, conclusion, to, um, like, 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 aha, now, now we see the tumor, we can remove it. Now we know what the problem is, we know how to medicate it. It's that kind of thing. It's like we can finally do something about what's been causing us these problems because we've spotted it. And spotting it has to do with a lot of work, digging in deep and being honest with yourself, 
And I feel like this has been coming a long time coming. I've felt this energy for you for a while. And I guess I don't feel like Pisces has have really been wanting to listen to me. But ultimately, this is a sense of something getting better. Now, in terms of what your partner is going through, what they need from you, all of those things are in the who is coming towards you. Please hop on over there. And while you're here, check out, because this is probably your sun sign, but check out your moon sign, please, because sun sign is just so inconsequential like not i wouldn't say inconsequential it doesn't mean any it doesn't mean nothing but when it comes to romance it's like your moon sign is your sun sign so please check out your moon sign at least and dive into your venus a little bit too um i just feel like you guys had to be reminded of that it's important um but this is a sense of yes you're finally being going to be able to do something and heal this is usually visiting going to visit somebody going to actually touch somebody or show somebody that you care maybe that's the problem they haven't been showing you that they care you know that they've been holding back or they they they've they've not been returning your feel your your um your efforts or or this is how you know that they're really into you too look be honest with yourself do you um like be honest with yourself be honest with what you see and that will expose are they really who you need or really want in your life there's something here where you're not going to be able to like what are their actions in other words the truth is in their actions and the biggest issue that pisces have with love because you're ruled by neptune is that you will fantasize a partner and you will literally fall in love with who you fantasize them to be when they're just a jackass in reality and you will not see it because you're in love with the fantasy and you don't distinguish between fantasy and reality well this is you look at the looking glass is what it's like it's like realizing that the other realms of uh, their portals or passages into the other realms so it's you almost realizing the reality of what's happening in this realm now through what are they doing how are they behaving look at their actions their actions will show you if they really love you if they're using you if they don't care about you if they're indifferent to you if they're a great partner what are their actions showing this is also a sense of their actions may be showing they're in distress and they need help. And that's where you'll be able to step in and help them because you'll be able to distinguish and say, oh my God, baby, this is what's going on. I think you need help. Maybe I'll take you to a doctor. Maybe I'll run an intervention. Uh, you can talk to me about things, but this is it might actually be you finally being able to see what's going on, what's happening and help your partner back to health. Ooh, oh, that's a good reading. That's a heavy reading. So what are they going through? Please come on over to the extended. We'll talk a little bit more about what they're going through and what they need from you or plain and simple, who is coming towards you. I'll see you in the extended Pisces. Aries, what is coming towards you? What, what, what is coming towards you in love and romance? Aries, 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 love and romance. Aries, Aries, Aries. No moon card came out. We'll give it a shuffle. Something is upside down. Aries, Aries, Aries in love and romance, please. Aries. Ooh, look at the bigger picture. Aries, Aries, Aries. Usually this card comes out. Um, and you might want to pick out um who was it? Sagittarius. Ooh, damn, because that's a good, that's a good relationship for you too. A Sagittarius? Mm. But Sagittarius got your sister card, so you might want to check out their reading, uh, Aries. Aries, this is a card that comes out when it says you need to make your target bigger. You might be being a little bit too particular or a little bit too, um, well, I only look, yeah, particular, too particular. So open up your realm of, open up yourself to other possibilities. Expand that target. Like, it's almost like you're trying to, like, um... It's like, it's like going from like a basketball hoop to a soccer net. You know what I'm saying? That sense of like, let that, let that, um, I hate when I lose words. It really frustrates me. But just let that target area get wider of who you're willing to be with. Or, um, hmm. 
See, I almost just said something like what you're willing to tolerate, but I think that's part of the problem. That's what I got. It's like part of the problem is maybe you let things get too out of control and you tolerated too much and now you don't have know how to bring it back in. Like you don't know how to rein it back in because somebody's been running wild and you really can't handle that. Like there's something that isn't okay with you. Um, look at the bigger picture, full moon in Sagittarius. In a lot of ways, this card is usually just a prospecting card as well. As in, you're really not sure what you want. You may, if you're having problems with your spouse, you may not be sure what's wrong. So this is like that prospecting card of like, or exploratory surgery. Like, let's go in to see what we can see or like try to figure out what's going on because there's a sense of something needs to be addressed, but what is it? It's like maybe the target area is so big right now that what you need is to refine, refine, refine and be able to focus more because right now it's like, yeah, I could shoot my target anywhere and it would hit, but it will it hit where it's important. It's almost like you just can't hit where it's important. You can always get hits, but you can't get the hits where it's important. You can you, you don't you don't your arrow doesn't land where it's important. So it's almost like this sense of just needing to not widen your space, but almost bring it down. Maybe that's the issue. That's the problem. It's almost like things aren't focused. They're, they are not focused enough on you. That's that sense of like Aries. It's almost like, they, it's like they're, they're aiming too wide. They're just not getting it. A frustration of like, but how do you not know me after all this time? Or why do people never choose me? Like my girlfriends are going home with somebody, but unless I make the move, unless I'm the one that takes the action or the initiative, ain't nobody seeing me. Like nobody's looking at me. There is that sense of like being missed because nobody's focused. The focus isn't on you or nobody really understands what you need. Maybe you better be looking for a Sagittarius. Sagittarius just have great energy with you. Um, they just really do. I will take a look at their reading. We're looking at Aries though. Physical touch. Okay. What's going to hit the target? So this is saying to me like maybe just maybe people need to be more physical with you. There is a sense of why can't I find that spouse that loves sex as much as I do. But every time I do, they end up being a freak who it's only about sex with. And it's like, no, why can't we incorporate both those elements together? Receive with love and appreciation and physical touch. A tender touch can mean so much. This is a sense of feeling alive again because you're getting nooky. I'm serious. You may be actually getting a lot of options. This, this, this energy is almost like a lot of options or a lot of nookie, a lot of physicality, just the things that will make you feel warm, the things that will make you feel loved. It's almost like star for attention and now you're not. If somebody is trying to hit the mark and they've been missing it, then they just need to like come into the bedroom and be freaky. Like there is a sense of touch me, touch me and you'll hit my target. Like what do you need? It's not complicated. Why are you missing this? But also a sense of show me that you love me through how you touch me. Show me that you love me. Show me that you're crazy about me. Why can't like, don't take your hands off me. It's like, that's, come on, like, let's like, has something cooled down in your sexual relationship or you're not, no, this is you getting nookie. That's what I keep feeling. There's something with here, Aries, you, you're getting nookie. There is sex that is coming in your life. Even if you're single, there's a sense of like hooking up, of feeling good, of feeling better about yourself. It's like feeling that you're like, you're able to breathe and your world is expanding. This is a card of expanding. Of, of being broader, of broadening, opening up, and it feels like your world is getting better because it's being full of you getting filled up, Aries. That's what it is. That's what this energy is, a sense of like, mm, really getting filled up. So there's a lot of nookie going on. Now, who is coming towards you or who are you? I don't know. That answer is below. Let's go over to the who is coming towards you and see the other side of this. <clears throat> picture that keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger if you know what I'm saying I will see you guys over in the extended Taurus let's see Taurus who is coming towards you Taurus who I mean no no what is coming towards you in love and romance Taurus love and romance Taurus there we go slash slid out nothing will come of this situation you're dealing with a circumstance 
where you are either stuck between a rock and a hard place or are not able to, are not able, like it's almost like give up, let it go, let it go, let it go. This is a relationship that you need to give up on. A relationship where nothing is coming. Maybe this flirtation, maybe you don't want it to come of something. Like maybe this was just all temporary hookups. This is like quarantine freakiness. I don't know, but this is a sense of whatever is, it could also be good news, right? Because whatever's been bothering you and your partner, maybe maybe nothing, maybe something that it's not gonna last forever. It's 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 nothing. It's just it's just an exchange. Void, of course, only lasts a couple of hours. If this it, you could be lost in this murkiness, and I got this reading for you. Go check out your reading, your um, extended reading for Taurus. Just this past Taurus video. Go check that out. It's on my it's on my Vimeo page. Um, cause this was very similar energy, which, which is not a surprise. Those readings always go into a deeper read, but it's like, this is a sense of this murkiness, this like muckiness, this sense of like, why is nothing working out? Why does nothing make sense? Why are the answers not coming? You gotta let it go. And what I mean by it is the expectations for it to be different. Because when you let go of the expectations, you actually relieve the tension and allow things to heal. So this is a sense of if you're dealing with a partner, stop talking about it. Because talking about it isn't getting you anywhere, it's just frustrating you. Maybe you just need to both shut your mouths and you know what I'm saying? Um, or it's almost like, um, you know, whoever you've been calling or, or trying to get in touch with, oh, it started out so good. We had a great text message conversation. And the first time we met, it seemed like we had such great chemistry, but then they went ghost on me. It just, let him go. Like, let him go. Somebody who went goes ghost on you, you should not be thinking about. Like, why you want to invite a ghost back? Boo-hoo. When you invite a ghost back, all you get is boo-hoo. That's all you get. Boo-hoo. That's it. Like, don't invite ghosts back because you're only going to get a lot of boo. Boo-hoo. That's it. Um, a circumstance of, because void, of course, doesn't necessarily mean, oh, you're getting divorced. You know, you had a happy marriage for 25 years and, oh, it's gone now. <laughs> no, it just means that whatever you're dealing with or whatever crappiness has been happening with you, in your relationship or, you know, whatever conflicts has been ha have been happening, you need to let the expectation that you can do something about it. You need to let it go because your efforts are not helping. They might actually be hurting. You know, you could be pushing somebody further away from you or you could be coming back like arguing, arguing. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. And that's just shutting your partner down. You need whatever you, nothing is going to come from the, 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 the path of action that you have chosen. So choose being passive, choose like being like, all right, you know what universe, if I don't know which way I'm going, then you take the wheel. That's the kind of energy when void of course comes up. It's like Jesus take the wheel because I, there's, there's murkiness here. I clearly don't know the situation enough to be able to affect it the way that I want to. So I just got to trust right now. Don't strain and don't push when it comes to void of course, because, um, you're not, you're not going to get anywhere. You're really just throwing away your, um, you're really just throwing away your energy. Ah, and look what card came out. The, the perfect energy for void of course, rest and relaxation is essential. So somebody, it could be you. You just like, get off my back. I can't, I can't talk about it even one more second. I need to, boo, I need to know you're there. I need to know your presence. But at the same time, get out of my face. I just need, this, this circumstance needs to be put to rest. It needs to just rest. Not like RIP, but like, just relax. Just, just, just maybe sleep or sleep on it or let it go. Like there's a, there's a sense of like massage it out. Um, and then listen with your heart instead of deciding that you know the story be willing but this has to happen first i'm telling you right now there's a process to this this is taurus let it go let it relax you need to just be take a chill move away and it listen it could also be that you've been doing so much work you've been working so hard that your boo hasn't seen you that's what you need to give it a rest whatever is really kind of Throwing off your romantic life is what you need to take a break from. And then 
pay attention with an open heart. Don't judge. It's hard. I know, especially this earth energy. I always know what's right. Do you? Because what's in somebody's heart is a mystery to some people who've been married for 30 years. So this is a sense of really going back when you finally come back together, being relieved enough and having had enough rest to let the pride go, let the pre prejudices go, and just now be able to like listen to each other with open hearts. There's a sense of TLC, tender, you know, um, just like lay, lay off on the preaching and do more listening. Now, I don't know if that's you or them, but I have a feeling like it's a sense of more you. Um, you just like, you just need somebody, somebody just, or you yourself just need to listen and not try to fix or try to do. Um, you need, like, let it be more passive and you'll see that the person will start to open up to you in a way that they were shutting down. There was a sense of just like, and, and this does need to shut down for a little while. It does. I, th I think more to heal, but definitely to give clarity and to let both sides get back to neutral so that you can have an open conversation. So what exactly are they thinking or feeling? What do they want? Or if you're single, who are they? Like who is coming towards you? That information is in the extended and that link is below. Taurus, I will see you in the extended. Gemini. Hmm. What is coming towards you in love and romance for Gemini? For Gemini, love and romance for Gemini, please. No, 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 no. Oh, but, oh. Love and romance for Gemini, please. Love and romance for Gemini. Hmm. Okay. Confidence is your key to success and step out of your comfort zone. Gemini, you keep getting this North Node. How many times has this come out for you? This is a card that says, you know, um, whatever you've been choosing or whatever you've been selecting, it's like, um, it hasn't like, like go. <clears throat> Ooh. It could very well be that you're dealing with somebody that needs your help right now. And that even if it isn't like, it, it's almost like you want to help them. Talk to them, communicate with them. Your presence in their life right now is going to really help them. This is a sense of um, the almost like your North Node, your, your very personal North Star. I tell everybody, when you get the North Node card, always check what is your North Node. What, what sign, what zodiac sign is your North Node in? Because that's your guiding light throughout your whole life. If you look at the tenets and morality of the zodiac sign where your north node is, you basically get the plot, like get the pathway. Like if you emulate those characteristics and work on yourself that way, you will be the best version of yourself in this lifetime. It is the path that you're heading on. The things that challenge you the most, most but will also make you the best person. So this is doing what is right, the sense of be being the best of yourself and showing the world the best of yourself. And like, you know, like just be true. It may not be the easy path, but it's definitely a path that you need to take. Have the strength and the courage. This is Leo energy. Have the strength and the courage to be the best of yourself. It could very well be that you are somebody's guiding light right now. Somebody needs, because this is like fill me up, that kind of energy. Somebody may need your support. Somebody may need your help right now. There is a sense of, some, it could be you're lacking confidence. And when um, when it comes to romance, but it's almost like your, par your partner may be lacking confidence right now. They may need you to help them out and to help them remember why they are so amazing, why you love them so much. A sense of, of yes, you're important to them. Does that bother you? Well, guess what? Have more freaking strength because it's actually a wonderful, um, it's actually a wonderful compliment to you and compliment to what you're capable of. A sense of, a strong sense of how you can make or help somebody be the best of yourself and is the best of themselves. Um, confidence is your key to success. You have yourself focused. I really do think that you have yourself focused. You're challenging yourself. 
you're looking towards your future. You may not even be interested in romance right now, but there is a sense of, there's a caveat, Something is asking you to do something that you're not comfortable with, but it's not in the bad way. It's in the good way. It's in the way that it's going to challenge you and make you a stronger person. So it's really something that you need to confront and it's something that you need to do. And it's something like have courage. It may not be the most obvious. You could be dealing with a situation, a very, a very difficult relationship where you, it's going to take a lot of courage. It may take all your courage in the world. You may have wanted to walk away from this freaking situation, but the truth is something in you knows that if you walk away from it, you're losing something that is you're never going to be able to replace it. And so it's going to take a lot of courage for you to follow this path, but it may be the best decision that you ever freaking made. <clears throat> Ooh, Gemini, Gemini, Gemini. Hmm. Take a what I say. Take a chance on love, Gemini. Take a chance on love. That's what you get. That's what you get. Take a chance on love. Combine, uh, uh, like, give yourself over. Be brave. Be brave enough to, you know, go and be on somebody's side. Be brave enough to share a vision with somebody and maybe even make, make a long-term commitment with somebody. This is somebody who has the same vision as you, who wants the same things as you. Go and join them. It's almost like a part of you wants to, but you're going to, you feel like, I'll lose, you know, you're going to get, you're getting that Gemini clench where you're like, oh, I'm going to lose too much of myself if I, if I join their life. But you'll be opening yourself up to a whole other life and a whole other adventure. And that adventure is going to be something that you would never, like, it's the best thing you ever did. So, Gemini, what are you waiting for? Get on board. Consider your foundation. Look at how committed you are to love. Um, there is a sense of shaky ground here. Mm, you could have broken up with somebody. This could be an ex that you can't stop thinking about or that you are going back to or that for some reason, like, you know, you're getting together with again, like you've never been able to get over them. Or there's a sense of, yeah, your relationship is on the rocks. Why? Because you're not on the same page. Like, can you, what can you do to get your relationship back on the same page? Or choose your relationship because there's a sense of, um, like I said, are you even into a relationship right now? Uh, being very, very distracted. There is, I'm just saying, there is something here that feels like you need to do the more difficult thing. You you need to do the thing that is 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 uh, scary for you or that isn't comfortable for you. If that means breaking up and going your separate ways, then that's what it is. But this is more aligning with choose them, choose love. You know, choose, choose, choose love so that the rockiness in this foundation gets healed. Like choose, choose, that's what it said, choose love. Like for, forget the house, forget the house on the hill or the traditional rendition of what love and, and, and romance and a relationship is supposed to be. Go your own path, choose them and go on that crazy wild adventure together. You may not ever have that white picket fence dream. But that's, is that what you even really want? Defy it, defy it and go a different direction, but have the courage to plot your own course. And don't think you have to give up on love just because you have to blaze a new trail for love. All right, Gemini, who is coming towards you? <laughs> um, I mean, let's see, let's see uh, what their energy is, what they're going through, what they're thinking, what they want. All that information is in the reading below. It's, um, yeah, who is coming towards you. Uh, that link is in the description box below. Gemini, I will see you guys over there. Cancer. What's up? Cancer, what is coming towards you in love and romance? What is it? Emotions are running high. Yeah, I know they are. That's all it's going to give me, huh? For now, let's start with this. Cancer, I have a feeling you're going to really want to see who's coming towards you, like what they're going through, what they're thinking. I think right now there's so much emotions in you and that can only happen when things are sh the shit in the fan with your partner. So there is a sense of really needing to know or having that in, really needing to have that insight. And that link is below. Please do join me for who's coming towards you. That's the extended reading. Emotions are running high. Ooh. 
Um, a lot. There's a lot, right? It's almost like you're losing your damn mind. You, you do. I tell you people all the time, what the f are you doing breaking a cancer's heart? Don't you know that we think with our hearts? And if you break our hearts, what the hell are we left with? Like, is it any surprise that we go absolutely insane when we have a broken heart? You haven't left us with anything to fall back on. This is a sense of, listen, I get it. Cancers, I know that right now everything seems like it's, it's hitting the fan. You can't keep up with it. You can't clean up the mess enough. You want to clean up the mess. You want to fix You just, I just want it back to the way that it was. I just want it back to the love that we had when it was perfect and amazing. Like, why can't it go back there? What, what is going on? Why, why, why? You want answers, you want solutions, but what you really want is for all of this to never have happened and to go back to the, 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 your, 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 your version of perfect. The problem is that this is what happens, Cancerians. It's like, your version of perfect may not have been what their version of perfect is. And we have to be able to go through these conflicts with each other. And every freaking time that you get emotional or too emotional, it's basically you saying, I'm not going to deal with this. I'm going to get completely emotional so that I shut you down and force you back into that place where I need you to stay. And that's not fair. Right? Or they're doing this to you. Right? That's not fair. It's like using emotions as weapons because we really do. We weaponize our emotions. We absolutely do. We got to own that. But there is this sense of that may be falling back on us. That may be backfiring. You know, when the shit hits the fan, it gets all over our face and we end up eating it. Right? So we really need to watch what we're flinging. We also need to watch like how much we need somebody else. I know it's hard because love is everything to us. But this is a sense of, did you put all your eggs? You put all your eggs in that one basket. And it's not that you're not supposed to prioritize your lover, but you're supposed to keep some eggs for yourself. And when we don't, there's a sense of now we're losing everything. I have nothing to eat. I have nowhere to go. What am I supposed to do? You were supposed to have some eggs for yourself. Like this is that energy of emotions out of control. And emotions get out of control because we let them ride on somebody else. And so we don't have control over them anymore. So this is a sense of Cancerians figuring out how to put your life back in your own hands. And I'm telling you, that's the most difficult, complicated thing for us to do but it always is exactly what we need to do to give them the space and time to be able to like see us the way they saw us when they fell in love with us as opposed to the way they see us now, which is somebody who is crazed or emotionally manipulative. Right? We need to, we need to just, we need to get ourselves back. If, if you want that relationship to work, you need to figure out how to get yourself working first. You really do. You need to dial it back. That's all. Ooh, all these messages are coming out. I'm just saying, I know, I know we don't like to hear that, but it's true. It's true. We have the power. We, we can do it. If we show that we, we love ourselves and we love our lives and we're capable of having a life without them. I mean, I'm sorry, but who, okay, I know you do. I know you do, Cancer. I was going to say, who wants to be the center of somebody's happiness? Who wants to be somebody's happiness? I know you do, Cancers. But most people, especially if you're dealing with an air sign, you're dealing with a fire sign, whoo, forget about it. You just ruin things. I'm just letting you know. You, you just ruin things. You can't be... They, they don't want to be responsible for your happiness. They want to be responsible for your happiness and they're looking for a partner who's going to add to their happiness. They're not looking for somebody who's like going to smother them and need them and need their attention and need their affection. They're not, they, they just can't, they can't handle that. A water sign, they could probably handle that. <laughs> That's really exactly what they need. But is that who you fell for? Check their moon sign. 
Because I know it's like you're saying to me, Michelle, I'm dealing with a Scorpio. We're supposed to be perfect for each other. What's going on? Do you know their moon sign? Because if they have a fire moon, then guess what? Emotionally, you're dealing with a fire sign. That's why they feel smothered. If they have an air moon, emotionally, you're dealing with an air sign. That's why they're freaking out because things are too heavy for them. So check out their moon sign. It's really, really important. It's really important. Ooh, cancers. Oops. What's going on? Cancer, cancer, cancer. Love. One thing. Love is all around you. Oh, my God. I keep telling this to my son. I'm like, your issue, six plus one is seven. Everywhere. Your issue is that you don't see the love that, and I'm not talking about like messing around or cheating or, or other romantic partners. I'm saying that if you open your heart and let go and stop obsessing over one person and you start to see the beauty that's around you in everyday life, in your dog, in your hobbies, in conversations with your friends, like if you find the love, if you can, a uh, cancers, if you can allow yourself to fall in love with everything that's around you, that's going to take pressure off your relationship. And there's love all around. There's so much love. There's so many things that want you to be a part of it. Your solution is so simple. It's just not easy. It's the most difficult thing for you to do, which is not obsess over that one partner and to just love yourself and your own life. And know that that is actually what makes your partner most happy. Because see, Cancerians, you freaking, you can take care of people in your sleep. You wake up and they have like a seven course brunch waiting. and you don't even remember you did it. You don't, you are not the sign that has to think about other people's needs. You know other people's needs. As soon as they walk into like the front door of your building, five stories down. Like it's like you, you already, you don't have to work on that. That's why I think you think, you think you need to put all this effort in, but you don't need to put like, <sighs> You already, you're already at a hundred percent before you even start trying. So when you, when you start trying, you get to 200% and everybody's like too much. And it's because you're already naturally able to do relationships. It's so natural for you, but you don't, you don't realize you don't give yourself enough credit. And that's why all of us end up always doing too much, which is usually why people break up with us because we just become too much. We don't realize that just by being ourselves, we do more than most people. So it's for you, your job is share it. Yes, you have a lot of emotions. Yes, you have a lot of love. Spread that shit around. Pass that shit around. Pass it around like a good joint, Cancers. Pass it around because it needs to be shared. You can't just be one person. Now, it could also be saying, that's what you need right now. You need to not be with one person. You need to like, share it around like you know like like have a little fun like not take love so seriously right now you know because when you take it so seriously it's overwhelming it's overwhelming them it's overwhelming you it's driving you crazy right now what are they going through what are they going through like what are they feeling who is coming towards you who may be you know you may feel all alone and worried and scared emotions are going crazy but and you like maybe there's somebody right there there's lots of options coming i don't know who is coming towards you what are they thinking what are they feeling we're going to get into that that link is below cancers i will see you guys in the extended leo Ooh, what is coming towards you in love and romance Who's coming towards you in love and romance? What is coming towards you in love and romance? What? Surrender to the divine. Oh, that's beautiful. Leo, in one statement for love this week, universe, take the wheel. Just take it. Whatever happens, happens. You got bigger, you got bigger fish to fry. You got other stuff on your plate. There is a sense of just looking up into the heavens and being like, help me, guide me, like, let it, let it flow, let it go. And I honestly feel like you've already decided this, like, you don't need this advice from me. If, if any of Leo is watching this, you're going to be like, yep, 
I made that decision, uh-huh. Because it's exactly where you need to be right now. There's a sense of, I can't control all this stuff around me. And I don't even want to because I feel like this is a really heavily emotional time for you. You know, there's a lot of craziness around and it could get real crazy when you think that you can't affect it or help it or solve it. Which is what you usually feel like you have to do, like protect everybody, be the leader, show the way through, like all those things. It's like, nah, I don't got the answers right now. And maybe, maybe people don't need answers. They just need somebody brave enough to ask the right questions. So this is you basically like, God, what should I do? Like in terms of love and romance, um, I'm, I can't make the decisions right now. I'm not, just don't make any, this isn't necessarily saying don't make decisions, but it's like, I'm saying don't make decisions. I'm saying that I, that's what I even, I'm like, I'm feeling from you. You don't want to make any decisions. This, this is a sense of just like kneeling down, bowing your head and praying. You could be praying very hard for somebody that you love. You could be praying very, very hard for a love to work out, to understand their feelings, to understand their needs. You could have just recently been humbled by a, a challenge or a statement or a conversation that someone just posed to you. Like something could have hit you like a ton of bricks. Like I never realized that I never knew. Um, I didn't know that you, you, what you were going through. I didn't understand. I didn't, I, you know, and all of a sudden it's like there's something very challenging when it comes to love and romance right now for you. And I mean, it's like challenging in terms of like, whoa, this, this just got real. This got really heavy really quickly. And it's not like you don't balk at that. You don't, you are not the, you are not the type that like, you know, like, like <clears throat> run away when the going gets tough. You, you do not do that. You're very loyal. But there is a sense of like, feeling a little overwhelmed with some information that you just got and not necessarily knowing what course do I take? Like, how do I handle it? What if your partner just got a cancer diagnosis? I'm not saying that's what is going to happen. That's not my, this, that's not predictive astrology. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, for example, like that kind of news, like what, that's the kind of thing that will bring you to your knees and be like, you gotta, you gotta help me out with this one. Cause I don't even know. What if your partner just like, um, you just had a conversation and they love you and you love them, but they just like admitted to you that they were molested as a child. And that's why they're having problems in the bedroom. You're not going to run away from that. You're not going to, you're not going to hightail it, but you also don't know what to do. You don't know what to say. So this is, <coughs> <coughs> this is the sense Leo of you genuflecting. This is a sense of you, ooh. You're not running away and you're not doing anything to make them feel bad. You, you're, you're humbled. You're humbled by what you've just learned. And you're looking for guidance to the divine for how the heck do I handle this situation? I Like, how the heck do I do it? I don't know. I've never been here before. So at the very least, Leo, you are at a point in love and romance where I, you've never been here before. This is brand new for you. And so you're more than happy to be sort of knocked on your ass and sit and watch. Okay. All right. Maybe I, I need to learn. You're not going anywhere. You planted yourself. You committed yourself. But you also are humble because you don't know what to do. Love and romance for Leo. Oh, there you go. You got it. We got it. We got it. Two cards for you came out. I love you. And treasure your loved ones. It's important to love others deeply. This is very, this is divine feminine energy. Really being focused on taking care of your family, of being the protector, of being the one that helps to provide the resources so that people can be healed of being the one who, who, who basically takes on this role of caregiver because you love somebody so much, holding their hand through their chemo treatments, or um, they just found out that they lost their job, like rubbing their back and being like, all right, when you're ready, 
We'll go online. We'll set up your profile. We'll figure out step by step how we're going to do this. Like this is a sense of you screwing your courage to the sticking place. I'm not going. But I don't know how to get through it. So what I'm going to do is just ask for divine guidance and focus on you. Focus on you being my, my priority now, your happiness and what, what do you need? What do you need? What do you need? You want to take care of your family right now. You want to show them love. There's a sense of you wanting to show people so much love that they're not afraid. That they don't question their environment. You want to you wanna like shield them, hold them tight. You want to protect them, nurture them. Maybe nurture them or protect them from the world like a womb. Like a womb protects a child from, a, from, from the world. You just want them to be safe. You're trying to like, you may be trying to protect somebody right now. Because you care, because you love so deeply. This could also be a pregnancy card of finding out that, oh my God, we're pregnant again. Oh my God, we're about to have a baby. And that's what, and that's the good news, right? But it's like, <laughs> it's also humbling. It's also like bringing you to your knees. Oh my God, like I always knew I wanted this, but like it's this overwhelming amount of joy and love could be what's bringing you to your knees right now. Let's see what your partner's up to, what you're going through, what they're going through, what you can expect from them, what they need from you. Or if you're totally single, who exactly is coming towards you? Please click the link below and I will see you guys in the extended. Virgo. Ooh. Ooh. Virgo. Virgo in love and romance. What do they need to know? Virgo. 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 Okay, Virgo. All right, Virgo. Someone's like, no. Not that one. No. Okay. All right, Virgo, the energy is gaining momentum. You had this a couple weeks ago too. The answers you need are coming. Ooh, are you dealing with a Gemini? There is communications here. There's also duality, but there is a sense this could very well be because you also got this card is whatever is going on in your life, it's multiplying. It's happening doubly. So, but it's, it's good. It's, it's, it's like positive momentum. There's a sense of you're talking more often. You're getting more communications. They're texting you more. Um, they're opening up to you. Their, their folk, their communications are focused on you so that you know that you are important to them. There's a sense of, of maybe you are finally talking. If you've been with the person for a long time, you're finally talking to somebody. It's like your, your conversations are getting deeper. They're getting you somewhere. They're giving you insights that you needed to be able to make the, like you're feeling more secure with your partner now because you've been talking more. Maybe you're getting more honest with each other, more um, unafraid of each other's thoughts or inner feelings or needs. Um, um, but they're almost like speaking your language. It could very well be you've just met somebody that's speaking your language. Gemini is all about personal one-on-one -on -one communication, being able to understand how to say what, how to put things so that people will understand them. So this is a sense of you could very well be saying what needs to be said so that somebody else is receiving it very well. But this is also a sense of communications could be coming into you so that you're getting the answers that you need um, to help you make the decisions that you need to make. Whatever it is, this relationship is becoming more interesting to you. It's becoming more personal. It's becoming more one-on-one. -on -one. And there is a sense of that increasing, like, like it getting deeper. Um, hold on. The answers you need are coming and the energy is gaining momentum. Answers you need are coming. You could feel something starting to happen. That's the thing. And I don't know what that something is. I don't know if it's good or bad. And I think that's probably because I don't know what's going on in your life. But whatever it is, you could, feel, you could feel intuitively. And we talked about this in the reading that I just did for you. Go check it out. Intuitively, you knew something was on its way. Intuitively. And the thing about uh, Virgos is you're extremely intuitive, but you're also so pragmatic 
and so filled with worry that as soon as you intuitively know something, you'll squash it and then you'll try to rationalize it. And you'll usually try to rationalize yourself away from it so that you could feel comfortable because it worries you. But this is intuitively, you already understand something. You could already feel it. You already get it. You already, you already know it's coming and now it's coming quicker. It's coming faster. It's nearing, it's nearing, it's nearing, it's coming closer. And I think if you try to distance yourself from it, Virgo, emotionally, then it's, it's, it's going to steamroll you. It's, it's going to, it's, it's going to catch up to you. It's moving faster than you. So no, it's almost like that rock and Indiana Jones, that scene, right? It's coming toward him. It's going to get you. It's a, you're, eventually you're going to have to like just duck so it won't squash you it, but it's going to catch up and this could be a good thing you know you could it could be that you'd be like oh i love him i love him i love her i love her but i don't want to get too excited i don't want to get too excited i don't want to get too excited but you already know that they love you but at the same time you don't want to like oh my god you know like i don't want to get i don't want to put myself into it or out there too quickly or whatever it's gonna poof, the love is coming. And that's kind of what I, it, this is really loving energy. This is, you see the gaining momentum, things getting deeper, things getting more intense. This beautiful, this beautiful like uh, cascade of purple is a very luxurious and, and, and sensual. But there is an energy of, you know, they've been texting you more. They've been calling you more. You know what that means, dude. You know what that means, Virgo. But at the same time, you you don't want to like you 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 you're trying to be rational about this all right you know what go do do you virgo i'm not going to tell a virgo to not be rational and try to be in control of the situation but it's about to steamroll you and for the, for the people who you're about to get steamrolled with good stuff well then let's just do me a favor and allow yourself to feel the joy that's coming your way because there's a major joy coming your way please but then there's also that sense of like what if it isn't something joyful coming your way? Well, guess what? Facing it head on is a lot better than it squishing you from the back. You know what I'm saying? A sense of, but you are trying to get yourself to a place where you can handle it. You're actually trying to get yourself to a place, but are you or are you trying to run away from it? There's got to be a sense of you getting yourself to a place where you can handle what's ever coming to you. Don't deny what you intuitively feel when it comes to your romantic life. What you intuitively feel is correct. And what your job and responsibility is, is not to distance yourself from it with that pragmatism, but prepare for it with that pragmatism. Hold on. More to your reading, Virgo, 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 Virgo. Virgo, Virgo, Virgo. Okay. Oh, wow. Well, express love through gifts. A small token of love can convey great appreciation. Some of you may be getting engaged. It's like you could almost feel like something is coming. You could almost feel that you're about to level up in your relationships you know it you know what's coming and this is the confirmation card because this is a will you marry me card now for those of you've been married for 30 years this is a sense of i don't know for I, just an express like um now okay in that situation it will be the pearl of wisdom they're about to drop a truth bomb on you that is going to really help to explain things and help you understand what you've intuitively been feeling is coming. It's going to help. It's going to help clarify things. It's going to bring a resolution. You're going to get the answers that you need. You're finally going to get the answers that you need. The answers you need are coming. So that's a sense of your partner finally revealing something to you or opening up to you about something. I'm not saying it's something bad. I think it's something that you have felt you've been privy to through your intuition and now it's coming into the rational realm something that you can actually tangibly interact with or know something but something is coming out something is being revealed that's what i mean it's like the pearl of wisdom for those of you that are just in a starting out in a relationship this is definitely your relationship leveling up Maybe if it's not an engagement ring, it's a friendship ring. It's an expression of moving in together. It's an expression of we're, we're taking the next step. Um, I don't want to be without you type of energy. Now, 
the truth is that there may be a few of you that are like, things are going really well in your relationship, but ultimately it may not be the person that you really want. Like you want those things, you want love, you want marriage, you want somebody who always wants to be with you, but do you want them? That's, some, that's something that a few of you are dealing with. That sense of this person is offering you everything that you want, but they're not who you want it from. And that is what's been, what's been growing inside of you and what you've been hiding and trying to suppress and trying to make go away. But now it's coming to the surface. And it will be coming to a place where you can actually hold it, touch it, and do something with it. Ooh, Virgo. What? Now, let's get some insight into your person and what they're feeling and what they're going through. Or if you're single, who they're going to be. That link is below. I'll see you guys in the extended. Libra. Oh, this camera's shaking. Okay. Libras. Come on. Libra. Wait, oh, no, no. Let's go back. Libra. What is coming towards you in love and romance for Libra? For Libra. For Libra. What is coming toward Libra? 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 Okay. What and who is coming toward you? The first one out is prosperity lies ahead. Woo! High five, Libra. Damn. So this is you getting yourself luxury, man. This is you like, getting you something, a partner that knows how to take care of things, that knows how to make decisions, a partner that knows their way, their direction that's certain. But also, what is this? It is the opposite side of your Venus. The, the Taurus is also ruled by Venus. But it, Taurus is like the luxury part of Venus, the glamour part of Venus. So this could just be mean that they're fine, man. Like they got the look, they got everything you need. They're built just the right way. Um, they are, um, they got their sh together, like all of that things, but this is a sense of stability, stabilizing, stabilization, um, in your relationship or your romantic life. And then this is that your commitment is being tested. Prosperity lies ahead and your commitment is being tested. That don't make no sense, but it does because this is a sense of, their life or your life is so good and so prosperous that there is a sense of if you were not with the person that you really wanted to be with, but you stayed with them just because they needed you and it was working out for you, please understand and please know that that's going to come out. That's about to be exposed. The fact that, you know, in other words, they or you will leave at this point. Because you know that you're going to be okay and you don't need to stay in that relationship anymore. So you're going to be hightailing it out of there. Your commitment is being tested. A sense of how badly do you want it? Things are only half full right now. This is only, if you're in a circumstance or a situation that you're only half into and that you're staying just because maybe you didn't have any other options or because you didn't want to hurt their feelings, this is you or their life becoming so good that they don't need to stay anymore. So there is a truth and a hardcore like wake up call that's about to come out. A sense of what were they really there for you? What were they there for really? Or what were you there for really? This is a sense of, um, this is also a sense of if you were going through financially hard times, struggling a whole lot just to pay the bills or like something had even if you are financially sound something had just like 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 something had something had tested how you made money you know like money had not been coming in well this is a sense of it coming back of now they're finally being movements and whatever was really exacerbating that relationship is healing Whatever was making you think of leaving, whatever was thinking of uh, making you want to go, or whatever was putting pressure on your relationship or on your ability to have a relationship, there's a sense of, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. It's about to heal. It, everything's about to be okay. That through hardship, you're getting to exactly what you want. You're, you're about to land the mother load after a really difficult time of not being able to find what you wanted 
or the two of you having gone through hard times together and everything's about to be okay. Everything's about to be set right. You could be dealing with a Gemini, but we will get into that confirmation because this is my Gemini energy. Um, we'll get into that confirmation uh, in the who is coming towards you. That link is below. Okay. Um, but love who you are. This is a sense a destiny. So um, it could, like, it's almost like they are the wind in your wings. Somebody who fills up your sail. Somebody who supports you, takes care of you, loves you, believes in you, speaks your language, encourages you, say what you need to say. They're helping you propel you forward. Finding somebody who helps to propel you forward, who helps to make you the best of yourself, to bring out the best in you, but also they improve your life. This could be you're traveling, you're traveling, you're going to meet them when you're traveling, or you're finally going to go to see them, you're finally going to be able to get, to get together and be side by side with them again, because for some reason, you guys have been kept apart, right? Whatever this difficult situation is, they could have been traveling. That's the thing, because this is like a traveler card. They could have been wandering, they could have been traveling, or if your partner was unsure, because they weren't sure about you, they weren't sure they wanted to settle down, this is them settling on you. They're like, yes, I want to be with you. I don't want to settle down, but I don't want to settle down with you. Like, I do want to settle down, but not settle down with you. In other words, get on my boat, travel with me, let's go. I want to be with you. Like, fi figuring out a way to handle whatever it was that was getting in your way of being happy of being completely content. You're going to find that way. You're going to find that other solution that answers the problem and, and takes care of the trouble. You've got it. It's going to, it's going to be solved. It's going to be fixed. And I feel like this is a sense of, yes, you're finally going to get to see them again. You're finally going to get to physically be together again. They're coming back home. They've been gone, but now they're coming back to you. Or, You've been having trouble, and I say finances because Taurus energy is there. You've been having trouble with your finances or whatever you do for work, and now, and that could have been, you know, causing you problems in your commitment. It, you could have been struggling financially, and that, that's a lot of pressure. So, whatever it is, it's, it's over. You're finally able, you finally, oh, this is double eight energy. Money is definitely coming to you. Libra, money is coming into you. And for whatever reason, that's going to really help your romantic life. I don't know if they have money because they're they're they've got the they've got the um, resources to be able to help you. But you're meeting somebody who could definitely help to propel you forward, definitely help to take care of you, maybe like put you on a plane and and bring fly you to them type of thing. But this is a sense of them coming towards you, and then you almost like I can travel the world now, like going from rags to riches type of energy. Ooh, I want to see who this Daddy Warbucks is, a Libra. Let's check out the extended. That link is below. I'll see you guys over there. So thank you so much, especially for those of you who have watched this full video. Remember, who is coming towards you holds a lot more answers and deeper explanations. Um, I hope to see you guys over there. Um, if this is where we part ways, thank you so much. Um, please remember to check out your sun, I'm sorry, your moon, your Venus, and your Mercury, and your rising. That sun sign doesn't count as much as you really want it to, um, but definitely check out your sun sign too. Play around with this video. There's a lot of different ways to like use it to, to your benefit, but definitely check out the extended as well. Thank you so much, guys. The week aheads will be coming out this week too. I'll see you there.